Hi and welcome to my channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. So today we're talking about these Gal GS210 speakers, made in the late 70s. Uh, Gal, not a bad making speakers, like, you know, quite well known in speakers. Um, one of their, like, iconic models, shall I say, is the Gal GS401s. If you get a chance, look them up. They're like on this kind of like space age stand. And they've got like, it's a chrome stand and there's chrome bars each end of the speaker and the speaker is like horizontal rather than vertical like this. It's that kind of way. And they look quite smart and quite sought after really. They go for about 250 pounds, something like that a pair if you can get them. And they normally need some work done to them as well. You know, some bits replaced and whatever. But yeah, worth looking at because they're quite a nice looking speaker, you know, for the time. I think, you know, they were good like this, put it that way. You know, they look good. They look good. I wouldn't mind having a pair myself to be honest with you. I just have a little muck about with or whatever. But uh, there you go, you know, they're quite hard to find. Okay, uh, before I start, I've, I've done a quick uh, video of a shootout, you know, sound shootout between two speakers. I don't know how well that come across. Uh, I've not got a top of the range of recording equipment, but you know, I've done my best there. Hopefully it may give you some idea how one speaker sounds to another. Uh, the reason I stuck the track on as well, it was a copyright free track. It was, it was done by my brother, but um, I will stick some YouTube ones on there as well, some of these YouTube uh, tracks as well that you can put up give you maybe an idea of our um, speaker sound one against the other like um, I suppose it's a bit like uh, looking at a picture of a car or an house um, you kind of got a general idea but not to actually get round there do you start noticing the uh, scratches or dents or maybe how good it is like you mean to actually uh, see it in person thus uh, hear it in person but it, it may give you a general thing if they don't go down too well like, I'll stop doing them I won't bore you with them anyway Okay, well back onto these uh, Gal 210s here today. Um, let's just get on my bits. Right, um, yeah, if I tell you the measurements first, uh, they're 18 and a quarter um, in height. Oh, sorry, not 18 and a quarter, 15 and a quarter, getting carried away, making them bigger than what they are. 15 and a quarter in height, 8 in width, eight, this is inches, and 8 and a half inches in depth, 6 and a half inch uh, driver, and a 3 quarter inch tweeter. Now, uh, these are rated at 75 watts. I think they're 8 ohms. I'll stick that in the description in case I'm wrong. I have forgot that bit. Um, as usual, I take them apart. Just before I take them apart, I want to talk about budget speakers in general because I've had a, a bit more of a think about budget speakers. Because uh, I, I took the Wolfdales apart, the diamonds, these were quite cheaply made and St. Hills was better made and stuff. But I think the clue was in the actual title, budget. They're not going to be unbelievably well made for a budget because if they're really going to be well made and there's good stuff in them they're not going to be 60 pound though 70 pound though they're going to be 500 pound though that kind of thing so yeah maybe I should you know not mention so much how well made they are but it's nice to get one that is well made because you think you know some, some efforts gone into it you know they've kind of like not just got a few bits and slung it together so to speak but um yeah so you yeah, know just just what I think you know probably what you know budget really stands for probably Let's have a look at these. A, it, before, you know, this is a picture of the tweeter here before I took it out. And what I did notice is, you know, the tweeter's nice and recessed. It's, it's, they, they took a little bit of time there to actually put the tweeter. And the same with the uh, the, the woofer driver, mid-range driver, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they've recessed that as well. A lot of these speakers, uh, these this tweeter uh, would be sitting on top in its plastic casing. And, and maybe the, um, the, the base or mid-range would be as well. So just a little bit more effort's going into there. It would have took them a little bit longer to do that. I would have thought cutting it out of the, uh, out of the wood and whatever. But anyway, we take the tweeter out. Uh, if we have a look at the tweeter, it's made by uh, VIFA, FIFA, FIFA, something like that. Uh, I did look these up as it because I wasn't 100% certain. I must have been. Obviously, I'm learning as I go along as well. Um, these were founded in 1933 in Denmark, and they made speakers for a variety of different companies. For some well-regarded, you know, speakers as well. It weren't just all cheap ranges, like a variety of different speakers, uh, right up to 2014, and they're still going now. But they make their own wireless speakers now, so they've had, a, you know, a long run. You know, they're no mug, so they wouldn't be going that long if you was rubbish, like you know what I mean. So they made some, you know, reasonable quality stuff. I would say definitely, if not some good quality thereabouts kind of thing. Okay, so here's the driver as well. This is another FIFA driver. Uh, did, I did look the tweeter up actually just very quickly and, and these they still sell these new these tweeters at the moment uh, for about £20 each they are and the drivers they're a little bit harder to get but they're about £30 each 30 somewhere around there just to give you an idea what's actually in, in the box so to speak um, yeah got quite a bit um, 
a wire wall there uh, as uh, dampening and that inside quite a bit uh, of wire wall quite a lot in there and here's the crossover and then the crossover is a little bit disappointing I suppose you could say it's not on a board or anything it's not stuck down to the you know normally at the back it'd be kind of like incorporated with the terminals or something like that this is just kind of dangling in about inside which is a little bit annoying I suppose you know what I mean if you wanted to cut you know cut you know fine air so to speak but uh, that, that's that and I noticed the wires on these speakers, the wires from the crossover are quite, thi quite thin. They're, um, they're not as thick as the Kef, say. The, the Kef speakers, the Coderate, there are nice, great big thick wires on there, and these are thin. Now, does this matter? Don't forget these wires are 8 inches long, 10 inches long, something like that. And I hear people, and it was a, there's a post up on one of my things that made me think about this as well, just before I actually put this video together, is that... People say that they can change that wire from the crossover to the speaker and the speaker sounds totally, you know, oh, it's, made a, it's made a difference there. That sounds much better, like, you know what I mean? So I think you've got to, you've got to think of this logically, like, I mean, they're probably thinking they are saying different. I, can't, I just can't believe that this eight inch wire is going to make all this difference. Uh, if it made that much difference, you've got to think that piece of wire would have cost the company that length, five pence. Something like that. I know all the pennies add up, but five. So they think they say, "Well, we're going to make a mediocre speaker, but for five p extra, we can make a really good one." Which one do we want to go with? Well, we'll go with a mediocre one. Make an extra five p. You got that, but then you got to think about it now. From your amplifier to your speaker, you got a, a, a flex of wire. It could be two or three meters, whatever. And it, I, I ain't going to argue which what kind of wire you use there. It could be a right puck of wire, a million pound an inch. It goes all the way to the crossover, and it gets to that crossover. If you notice this crossover, they've got coils on them, resistors, etc. Now that coil there against this speaker wire, see how thick it is? It's pretty much the same thickness, and they're going to be the same with all the coils. It, it, a coil ain't going to be, for, for the higher frequency, ain't going to be a great big thick one. It's got to be a, a thinner one. And uh, same with the, even the lower frequency. It's going to be a thin wire. It's not going to be a great big chunky wire. And that, that coil, un, unwind it, and that, what that lead is going to be about three or four metres long. So there you go, you've got a little piece of thin wire that you're all against, and it's three or four metres long. So it's gone all that way, and that last eight inches, you're going to put a great big meaty cable in there, and that's going to make that speaker sound fantastic, it's, even though it's gone all that way, and that little thin wire around that car. A bit like going on holiday, really. You set off, you carry your bags to the airport, you carry them all around with you and everything, you carry them to the airport right up to the hotel, and the geezer at the hotel, the waiter comes along, he grabs your bags and takes them upstairs and you give him a fiver. He's, he's, he's probably took them 50 yards. What difference has that made? You might as well just carry them up yourself. So it's that kind of logic I'm putting here. Like I just cannot see that that last little bit of wire is going to make all that much difference. But there you go. My opinion, if you've got any thoughts about that, maybe put them in the comments. I like to be proven wrong. Um, say what you want in the comments. You know what I mean? That's what they're there for. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's all about having a bit of fun with me and whatever. And just, you know, just speaking what you think kind of thing. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's go with the sound. I don't want to cause any arguments. I'm not going to cause any arguments. I'm going to be like, like say, to try and advise and um, give you an idea what things sound like for that kind of money. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, if anything's rubbish, I do so. It's only my personal opinion. If I think it's, I say rubbish, it's not that good. I won't say anything's rubbish, but if it's not that good, I say, I don't think it's that good. I think you could probably do better kind of thing. And if I think something's pretty good, I think, well, you should bear this in mind for what you're paying. It's not a bad item, so to speak. These speakers here, I'll place them downstairs in a few positions, but the position I'm going to kind of like maybe talk about a bit more is where I actually actually placed them on the table where I've done that sound test with about, it's about 12 inches away from the wall. I uh, just want to give them a little bit of air from the wall, but of course, you, if you're going to have a bookshelf, they're probably going to be a bit closer. Now the bass sounded fine on here, like, it's not an overpowering bass, it's quite a low bass as it happens, it's not overpowering, but it's a bit on the, a little bit on the dull side, I would have said, a little bit on the dull side, not overpowering, a little bit on the dull side, and depending on tracks and that, it's, it's not that, it's not a detailed bass, but it's okay, like, you know what I mean, it's an acceptable bass, it's an acceptable bass, it's okay. The vocals were good, I thought the vocals were pretty good on this speaker, they come out, it was in the room with you kind of thing, they, they projected forward the vocals, they sounded quite nice, the vocals, so on the vocal side, male and female, I thought they sounded pretty good, you know, for, you know, for what they are, they sounded pretty good. Now the treble, these are quite high in the treble, they're quite high. So if you've got a, an amp that gives up, you know, gives it a bit of a, 
high hemp, I'm trying to think of the word, I forgot the word is anyway, you, you know what I mean, the, the hemp's giving a bit too much treble out, then probably not going to be suitable these speakers, you'll be turning that down, because these are quite, you know, the treble comes out quite high like, you know, I mean the high frequencies are, are very present on these speakers, they're quite detailed-ish, you know what I mean, they're quite detailed with the treble, you get some nice bits and pieces like, you know, when they do the triangle and stuff like that, they're, they're quite, they sound nice, they sound okay, they're, they're quite, maybe a bit too much, a bit too much forward to treble, maybe a bit too much forward, but they're a bit on the splashy side as well, a bit on the splashy, not, you know, like for instance, I mean, they're, they're good when you could, he's just going around on the drums and he's giving it a bosh on the splash cymbal, you're going to hear that splash, it goes, it's an, it's, an, it's an explosion of splash, but where the splash would fizzle out, you're not quite hearing that on these, it's kind of just a, uh, you know, and that's it, like it kind of stops quite suddenly, so to speak, but it's still quite nice. It's just this speaker is a bit on the treble, so like you, you may be tempted on quite a few amps to, to knock your treble down a bit, but other than that, it's a bright sound, it's a very bright sound. These speakers, very bright. So, like I say, you know, that's the probably word I was looking for. If you've got a bright amplifier, they're not really going to match up with these speakers. If you've got a dull amplifier, then this is going to help a lot. I know you've got the controls, bass, and treble to, to move things about, but. If you're going to have to turn the treble straight down one or two notches, you, that, the rest of that gauge from that side all the way around is it, pointless. You know what I mean? You, you're not never going to use it kind of thing. I think, you know, you, I like having a, um, an amp where you can go either way. You know what I mean? You kind of like where you want to be maybe and you can go forward a little bit if you want to even go back. You've got a bit more like room there to manoeuvre. So if you've got a dull amp, these are going to liven it up definitely. You know what I mean? These are a bright speaker. You know, the crossover is not much to that crossover, and I keep saying it at some stage I may change some of these capacitors and some of these speakers I've got and see if that, that helps or not. But all in all, for what you're going to pay, I paid £32 for these on eBay very recently. Actually, I paid a little bit less, I had a voucher, but anyway, £32. And that's what you're going to pay. I've seen them go for 20 Oh, you know, 30 35 something like that. I wouldn't pay no more than that, I would have said. Uh, but other than that, you know, for that kind of money, you're not getting a bad speaker, you know what I mean? They're not a bad speaker at all, you know what I mean? They're, you know, they're, they're worth an audition, that's for certain, you know what I mean, keep them on your short list, you're picking up these for 10 or 15 quid somewhere or something, you know, definitely grab them, like, you know what I mean, they, they are a, they're a change, you know what I mean, they're a little bit of a different speaker, so to speak. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that, I'll come back with a few other bits and pieces, I'm, I'm going to do a few tuners, I, it's, it's so much stuff I've got here, I've got to get rid of some of it, it's so hard to let go, but I'm going to have to do it and uh, get them on there, get them out of the way, and I can go and get something else, etc, and uh, keep the channel going. Okay, until then, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.